Oh, hey there. Welcome back to Proven's Garage. Uh, no idea what the hell's going on here. So you're probably thinking, uh, why is this thing way up in the air like this? Well, I'm getting ready to weld everything up before I paint it, and I need to protect this oil pan. This guy is just sticking way down probably about three inches below the rest of the chassis. So I'm gonna put a skid plate on there to make sure that I don't whack a rock or something and end up with no oil. Cause that's not gonna make for a good time. So I got some other little odds and ends that I'm gonna work on just to button things up, get everything finished welded, obviously put a skid plate on there. And then we're gonna get some paint on this thing. So another thing I'm doing before I get the engine out is gonna add a few more ponies to this puppy. So I got a Dynojet Power Commander 5, which in itself adds a decent amount of power. But since I'm running custom exhaust on this thing, and because they have this available, I also got the Dynojet Auto-Tune, which comes with two wideband O2 sensors that are gonna go on the exhaust pipes, and these are gonna help me individually tune each cylinder and make sure that I'm getting the right air-fuel ratio throughout the RPM range. So the kit comes with everything you need, uh, it's, it's pretty plug and play, it's pretty simple. Uh, the only thing you need to do though is drill some holes in your exhaust and install some bungs for your O2 sensors. So the kit comes with mild steel bungs. I have stainless exhaust, so I just went ahead and ordered a couple stainless bungs to go in there just because I don't want the O2 sensor bungs rusting and none of the rest of the exhaust. So I'm a drill these out. I got them marked already and I'm going to get these welded on and then we'll do a quick test fit and then we'll go back to making a skid plate. So for installing these things you definitely don't want to have your O2 sensor in the bung when you weld it in unless you want to spend another 150 plus dollars on a new O2 sensor. So what's good to do is find another bolt that fits in there and then after you drill your hole this bolt will help align your bung when you go to weld it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that drilled out. I got the frame for the skid plate done and tacked in place. And I think it'll protect the oil pan pretty well. Um, unless I, you know, jump it onto a giant pile of rocks, in which case I think I have a lot more to worry about. Um, but my plan is to take the motor out, take the rest of the front end apart, and then flip this thing over. And then I can actually build a removable skid plate, like an actual plate that I'll be able to bolt on and bolt off that'll cover this area and then also this area over here and we should be in pretty good shape so once I get it all taken apart I'm gonna weld up the rest of the frame and then I'm gonna start painting this puppy well I designed this thing to make the motor removable fairly easily which is why I made the roll cage in the back come off but you always gotta be safe and make sure you're working with a buddy I don't really have a buddy around, but I got Carl. Not doing it. And he's just kind of a loser. So I guess I'm on my own. You're a loser. Let's see how fast we can get this out. 
<laughs> wow. That was insanely fast. I mean, that 0.1 seconds? I mean, I don't even need Carl. He doesn't even pay rent. I'm trying to find a job. Yeah, full of excuses. Full of excuses. No, that's fine. Um, I'll just stop feeding you. But I'm hungry. And now he just whines like a little baby. Anyway, we're going to get moving on to get the rest of this thing apart. Well, this little AC unit over here is just not keeping up too well, so it started getting pretty hot in here. Then Maricard took off all his clothes and apparently ended up upside down. I don't know how that happened. But anyway, I uh, finished up all the welding on the frame. I added a little bar back here for my five-point harness. I still need to add another one for the passenger seat, but that one should be pretty simple. And then the only other thing I have to do is make a skid plate to go on here. And then we're painting. So getting pretty close. Uh, once I finish up the skid plate and the other little uh, five point harness bar, I'm going to start cleaning this puppy, start painting it. So hold tight. Got the instrument cluster mounted again. Got the skid plate on. The only last thing I can possibly think that I need to do any fabrication or welding for before I can paint this thing is floor pan for Milady. Well, all right. Maricar found itself upside down again. I don't know how this keeps happening, but. We're finally ready to start cleaning this thing and painting it, which means I am so much closer to ripping this thing off-road. I just can't wait. So I've been working really hard to get everything done. We got the floor pan in for the passenger. I got the mount in for the key switch and power switch and start button and the uh, throttle advance. I think we're ready to go. I've looked this thing over like 10 times to make sure I didn't miss any welds. Hopefully I didn't. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to start cleaning this thing up and then we're going to start painting.
phone died, <laughs> so I missed a lot of the painting. But I did paint my garage floor, so that's pretty neat. Gonna be fun getting that up. Anyway, uh, pretty sure a legend was born today. Maricart. Turned out pretty good, I think. I am pretty happy with it. So I was originally thinking I was gonna tape off at the seams where I was gonna go from red to white to blue. But then as I was painting it, I was like, you know, it looks kind of cool just flowing it together. The rest of it's so like, you know, straight lines and, you know, kind of blocky-ish. It's like, well, let's break that up a little bit. And I think it turned out pretty awesome. So now I'm working on painting all the other parts. And for these, I am doing a, it's like a titanium paint. I don't know. Titanium silver. Hmm. Anyway, so I thought that would go pretty good. I didn't want to make everything, you know, red, white, and blue. The motor's obviously not red, white, and blue, so I figured make the A-arms and, you know, all the other hardware that goes on there, just like this titanium silver color. I think it'll look pretty cool. And now I'm just kind of stuck waiting for paint to dry. So I'm going to have to reach down deep deep inside to find the most patience I've ever had and just wait until the paint dries before I put this thing together because I'm just dying to put it together and go rip it so it'll be soon it'll be very soon but I'm gonna get back to painting some more stuff and once the paint dries we'll get putting it together I think we've done it. Got her fully assembled. Everything's painted. All the wiring is done. I cleaned it all up. I put it in a nice loom, tighten that up nice to the frame. I still have to put in a little fuse box and I'm going to add more wiring for headlights, blinkers, and tail lights. But we don't need that to go rip this thing. So I still need to route some radiator lines and I'm waiting on some aluminum rod to make some fittings for that and that should be here in a couple days and then I gotta just wire up the fans and hook those up to it. I have the little side cover off here because I have a different sprocket that I'm gonna put on there. I actually have two different sprockets I can try. So that one's a 17 tooth. I got a 16 and a 15 tooth so I think I'm gonna go right to the 15 and see how that does and if I don't like that I can try the 16. I got all the wiring wrapped up. I still have to mount. Uh, I had to get a new uh, regulator rectifier because the old one was not working fully. It was charging but it was only charging at like 13 volts so this one works great. And I had a comment about mounting my computer and I did already have a plan for that. I had it just zip tied to the frame when I was test driving this thing, but I knew it'd be better to have some shock mounting for it. So I took this old case here and routed my wires into there. And then as you can see, I also have my DinoJet Power Commander and Auto Tune in there. And I just drilled some holes in the side, put some little grommets on there. And I'll have to I'll probably just zip tie the box through the bottom to the frame so I can still open it. And I think I'll probably just <laughs> zip tie the rectifier to the top and then get those wires out of the way. But other than that, I think we're pretty much done and it's just about ripping time. Well, all right, I apologize. It's been so long since I put out an episode. I was on vacation for a little while and then I was kind of sick. So it's been about a month. And I wanted to do the first rip off-road in this episode, but we had a lot of stuff to get done, and we're there. So as you can see, I got my Maricrocs on from Maricart, and next time we are ripping off-road. So I really appreciate you guys stopping by. 
Come to join us next time on Probing Garage.